there is no greater frustration than the knowing that money is not real. That money is a figment of our f***ing imagination. That it's not even backed by gold. It is fiat currency. It is pulled out of thin air. Yet it is this insanely powerful force over my life. And it is, it has the ability to, tri unlike anyone or anything else on this planet, nothing can trigger me more than money. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about this literal imaginary thing that we have made up as a collective species being something that holds so much of us back from our fullest potential, holds so much of us back into the space of being deeply oppressed, holds so much of us back into this emotional space of unworthiness. What the actual f is this witchcraft? What is this sorcery? Who is the one doing it? Because I have a bone to pick with you. I am tired. I'm I just It just feels so dumb. Like I feel like I'm fighting with an imaginary monster and I keep losing and it's embarrassing. I If you ain't making more than $100,000 at your job, why are you ironing your clothes before you go to work? Let them know that you need a raise. Go in there and tatted garments and clothes. Don't bring a lunch. Let them know that you're hungry. Whew. Well, we're going to start from... Okay, so this video is actually going to be a lot from different directions okay i just compiled a lot of videos for you guys just telling the story about the state of our minds are you know these days and what we're dealing with is just you know a compilation about this many people having different rants rants about you know um dreams and what hopes are like you know having like um a thought about what you want for your future and how like the how bad the economy is and where it's actually getting people to mentally where people just mentally just tired they're just you know checked out and also videos about people actually coming to the realization of what life is about like people just being like oh you know like this were the things that i was chasing before but like, I'm just, you know, realizing that, you know, maybe I should chase this now and just let things go. Like, just try to take life easy, take things easy and take life for what it is. Please make sure you click the like button. It helps with the algorithm and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Subscribe to the channel if you're watching for the very first time. Let's get right into it. Y'all ever get a bill so high you just can't even... I dropped my car off to the shop yesterday. I had been needed to put it in there. But I put it in there yesterday. They get back to me this morning. And they said, sir, it's going to cost $6,800 to fix your car. I said, you can keep that goddamn car. That's not my car. <laughs> that is no longer my car. You said to fix my car? My car wouldn't hurt me like that. That can't be my car. <laughs> you can keep that motherfucker. <laughs> because if I'm going to pay $6,800 for a car, it's going to be a different car. Another car. See what I'm saying? I'm finna go get this motherfucker and park it. Or, or just drive it till the wheels fall off till it die. You understand? Like, baby, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do for you. I ain't got nothing for you. You've served me well. You did your duty. But I can't do nothing for you. <laughs> All right. I have $3.63 in my bank account. And I don't get paid till the 15th. So... Got some free Chick fil A fries. I got a free McChicken. Um, I've decided that instead of being sad about this part of my life, I'm gonna embrace it. Because one day, I'm gonna be able to look back on this situation and laugh. But yeah, this is what we got going on. Living life, 26 making it work this is slavery they just let us watch tv when we're done with our day's work this is slavery we just have the choice of pizza hut and taco bell and burger king this is slavery times two not only do they make a majority of the money off of your labor you go and spend your slavery bucks and they make double on the products that you buy a car loan, a loan for your college education, a loan for your home. This is fucking slavery, you guys. They got people slaving so hard, they're developing mental health problems and 
And guess who gets the profit when those people seek help? Not us. It's slavery. It's slavery, but the white people are in the house. They're close to the massa. The rest of us are out in the field. And don't get it wrong, some of them come out of the house and go out into the fields, and some of them in the fields go into the house. Everyone's always banging so hard for capitalism, but it's, it's just slavery, you guys. It's just slavery. Raise your hand if you've been feeling pretty hopeless about what the future holds for you. Now, hopefully not too many of you raised your hands, but as someone who's a year away from turning 30, I've been having to come to terms with a lot of things that I don't like. I'm never going to be a homeowner. I'm going to be trapped in the cycle of renting for the rest of my life. I'm never going to be able to have kids because they are far too expensive. My future is always going to be paycheck to paycheck, no matter how much I save. I'm absolutely never going to have a retirement fund, whatever that means. Speaking of which, I'm not saying that you should, like, drop out of school, but if I would have known how irrelevant high school was going to be in adulthood, I probably would have dropped out. I don't think I've used a single thing I've learned from high school in my adult life. Like, yay, I know that Y equals MX plus B. Really wish I knew how to take out a loan, or file for bankruptcy, or do literally anything financial in the adult world. But at least I built character from being bullied. Speaking of loans and whatnot, I just paid off my car last year, and you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh yay, we'll have some extra money. Until you remember that you have to pay a $400 property tax every freaking year. And then of course you have all the upkeep expenses, and speaking of that, let's talk about insurance. One of the most normalized scams in this country. How am I going to pay over $100 a month for insurance on my car, but then when something happens, they won't pay for a thing unless the cost is over $500 that I cover? A truck kicked up a rock at my windshield and I had to replace it with my own money because it was under $500. And then your rates go up, even though you did nothing wrong, and you've been paying them thousands of dollars for years. I love this country so much, because unless you are born into wealth, you have almost no chance of getting anywhere. It's either be born into wealth or get super lucky with meeting the right connections. And I'm so tired of this whole pull yourself up by the bootstraps or whatever they say. I worked 40 to 80 hours a week for five years. Five years straight, no break. And I got nowhere. This is not how life is supposed to be. The rich run everything and then you have poor people defending them. Y'all are so upset about a tax increase on the rich as if the 40k that you're making is going to be affected in any way. And let's talk about taxes. Why are we all so okay with the government taking so much of our money and not representing us whatsoever? Not doing their jobs at all. And I know I'm just ranting in this video, and we'll get back to our normal videos very soon. But I'm just so frustrated and I hate not being able to see a future. Just everything in this country is set up so horribly, it all just feels like a scam. Capitalism is such a cute idea on paper, but it's not working. Living on $1,200 a month should be outlawed. Like the very fact that there are people in America in 2024 that's living on $1,200 a month and that's all that they get is absolutely insane to me, but it's only one way to doing it and I'm gonna tell you about how. The income that people are receiving for $1,200 a month is social security. And according to this article, they're saying that social security is expected to run out in 2035 now while that sounds like a long time away i remember when i was a kid and i used to see on the news because my grandma would always watch the news i remember they would be on tv and like the republicans would be like you guys better stop your spending and be more responsible talking to like congress and they'd be like you guys are gonna you're mortgaging our kids future and i was thinking to myself oh okay well the future is now i'm the kid clearly but the people that are receiving social security that's only getting twelve hundred dollars a month are managing to live because of one reason now i hate to state the obvious but y'all they're homeowners and i know it's really cool right now to get on the internet and talk about oh well it'll never be your house if you gotta spend have property taxes and you gotta pay insurance it's ridiculous well, baby, let me tell you something. If I was making $1,200 a month, I would definitely be more comfortable spending $300 a month on property taxes than $2,000 or more on principal interest taxes and insurance if I buy a house late in life and or rent. So America was built on this promise that if you work for so many years, you were supposed to end up getting three things when you retire, pension, 401k, and social security. Well, pension ain't really a thing no more. 401k is kind of hit or miss now. So then that leaves Social Security, which goes back to the $1,200 a month that I was talking about. Now, I don't know if y'all know how much Social Security is, but that's really seriously a real number. It's hardly ever $2,000 a month. 
But the other part of that was, one, you're supposed to have a paid off house. So that was going to drastically reduce your expenses. And the other part that people still don't talk about is the fact that you were supposed to be sharing all of these bills and debt with a spouse. Because when your spouse dies, you get their social security. So anyway, I say all of that to say, what is your plan? And when I say, what is your plan? I say so very seriously because I get it. When you 25, 30, you might not see it. But when you hit 41 and you don't own no house, 51, you don't own no house, 61, and you don't own a house. Like, how are you going to seriously afford your life if you can't even scrape up money for a down payment? Does anyone else find it so unsettling and gross and weird that the only people working on labor day are actual laborers the majority of people that have the time off are like sit on your ass white collar office workers and i say that as a sit on your ass white collar office worker like it's not labor and not only that it's like okay now all of these white collar workers have the day off and now they're gonna go flood the brunch places and flood the bars and flood the places that all of the blue collar and like service workers are. And now like Labor Day is not only not a day off, but it's like harder and more work than a normal day. I worked in food service for 10 years and Labor Day always sucked. It was like so exhausting and I'd leave like with no soul in my body. Also, I you just know that there's like some crusty ass dude in a button down who's going to brunch today and not tipping their server. And that is like just so, whew, it's crazy. Like, have you no shame? What? Nobody talks about how hard it is to want to be successful and not know what at. Like, I feel like I have so many different talents. There's so many things that I'm good at. There's nothing that I've tried that I haven't excelled in. But that's what makes it 10 times harder for me to commit to something to do long term. And the worst part about that is when, like, older people, they ask, like, oh, so what is it that you want to do for work? What is it that you're working towards? Barbara, I don't know. I don't know. And unless you're going to give me a new job, don't ask any questions until I have it figured out. Because I can't help but feel like it's a jab. Like, oh, you still don't have it. You still. No, I don't, actually. Like, at this point, I just want the bag until I figure it out. And if you're not going to help me figure it out, don't ask. And I don't know if maybe there's like a level of insecurity that's rooted in the way that I feel. But I just feel like at this point, we're getting to a place where I feel like people should know how to read the room. You know that I have not been saying like, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to that those have not been the conversations that have been circulating. So every time I get asked, if I don't tell you, don't assume that I have it together because I will let you know because I'd be happy to have it together when I do have it together. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just like it's hard like it's hard already trying to figure it out and it doesn't help when people try to put pressure on you to figure it out because it's like but you don't think i think about this every day no shade i didn't mean to use the b word but like this life is actually very difficult to be honest like the, the constant thoughts about how that you need to do something some people are actually always like having the thought of wanting to do something maybe they're able to you know still chase something and be able to do something but for some like it's really stressful because it's like you don't even know what where to start from what to do and you're like you're confused and then you feel like you need to you need to do it or else you feel unsuccessful you feel unsatisfied with your life and it's like maybe you've even achieved like some things that are good enough or just like chill and enjoy life and just be calm and enjoy what you have but the whole oh my god i need to do this i need to do this i i gotta have a purpose i need to do something i need to achieve this like for some of us like you're feeling really stressed with this type of situation where you're worrying because i feel like a lot of us are actually dealing with this like this is our daily life we're always worrying we feel like we need to get to a certain point in our life we feel like we need to achieve something and actually be great like be rich be do be this be that and just like try to just you know, relax and enjoy what you have because I think sometimes like you kind of forget to actually take in the moments that you have presently. We are living in a life that is just short. Like before you know it, time just passes by so quickly. Let us just try to enjoy 
every day that we just we are alive let us try to uh, like we celebrate those little wins that we have some of the things that we've achieved let us appreciate it daily and then like slowly work like you know work our way into the next but like having letting it like you worrying about the one that you're gonna achieve can actually before you know it like if you put it too much like if you put too much focus into it you wouldn't even know what is happening in your life. You wouldn't even notice when you achieved it because you're always looking for something. You're always searching for something. You wouldn't even know that your today is actually a day to be celebrated, a day to celebrate a win and achievement that you were wishing for years ago. I'll be 20 plus realizing the reality of life and how hard life really is. I've realized this shit since I was 12. It took y'all this long. I wish I had that fucking luxury. I've been new life with... I've been wanting to jump off the motherfucking cliff when I was 12. I been knew how real this life shit was at 12 years old. I was 12 wanting to be a kid again. This time and apologize. I want to apologize to my parents. Every time payday came around, I would ask y'all for money. I would say y'all was broke. And I thought y'all was lying. <laughs> now I'm in y'all shoes. Payday come around. This is a piece I wrote six years ago, but I think it still resonates and it's still very, very popular for people to want to read and click on and send me emails about it. It's called Why Having a Purpose in Life is Bullshit. I talked to my friend for an hour and a half yesterday. She's a year or so post-cancer treatment and is wondering why the hell she, would, she was saddled with a really yucky one, which required her to lose a part of her body and her hair. Spoiler, only one of these has come back. <laughs> Meanwhile, my dearest friend is actually crying by a river. She's a little bit Joni Mitchell, so let her be. And wondering why she hasn't got some grand purpose now that she's been through all of this. Why she doesn't have a purpose now that she's been dragged back from the edge of death's public toilet bowl. After we spoke, I thought about her a lot because I love her and she's one of my favourite people in the world. And with her permission... This is what I texted her. Purpose in life is bullshit. What if I told you that your purpose right now is to be here? That's it. All you have to do is show the fuck up. If you want to paint, paint. If you want to write, write. If you want to bake, bake. Do it. No wonder so many people feel like failures. Being told they have to have a purpose makes them feel like they haven't hit their own personal KPIs and should have just shoved their head in the oven and be done with it. Put the cake in the oven, not your head, my darling. Strive instead for a curiosity-filled life, one where you try things and share them with the world or no one. There are no rules. The next thing you do is to breathe and then breathe again. You have my permission. If you need it, stop seeking, just be. Take the dance class, go to the Galapagos Islands, eat the snail, learn the language, join the choir, pick up the racket. Not everyone's purpose is their job. That is a lie that is told to us so we keep working eight hours a day. Actually, very few people's purpose in life is their job. We put too much pressure on our careers to be everything and more. And it's actual fuckery, my friend. And it's causing more and more depression in the world because people feel shit ass that their job isn't making them want to get up and punch the air with their awesomely awesome life. What about if you pursued creativity instead? Why not pursue this as your purpose in life? And your job is simply to support that. If you think of your work as just funding your creativity or, or curiosity, life is somewhat more palatable, right? Write the poem or the book or throw the clay down or do up the car or pick up the paintbrush. That is enough of a reason to be here. We need creative stuff so we don't have to feel shit about the other stuff. When we spoke, what I read from your voice was the issue of worthiness. Why get cancer? Why survive? And then have nothing at the end of it all. What was it all for? <sighs> Well, you survived because it was for me and your husband and your kids and your family and your friends and your presence in our life is enough of a purpose. That shows us your worth. 
that isn't to say that those who pass from cancer aren't worthy enough to stay. They were all worthy, but you survived and survival was your purpose for a long time and that is enough. But I'm asking you to understand this. There is no such thing as fair, my darling. You are stronger by being vulnerable and saying that you don't know what's coming next in your life than you are by pretending that you have everything sorted. No one really has everything sorted. Your create creativity is a tool for you to express yourself and what you feel, so try everything. Your relationships and the love you give and, the, and receive is your true purpose. It is everyone's purpose. Love is the purpose. When my father died, the love was enormous. It was like a huge ball of flowers that became a light and then floated off into the ether, showering us all with scintillas of light and joy and the extreme knowing that this was the meaning of everything. So shore up the banks of your life with love, baby, and the rest will follow. Say yes to kisses and hugs and hand picked bunches of flowers say yes to patting the cat on your next short walk up the street as you try and get your strength back say yes to cups of tea and watching tv and all that stupid shit that will not make you smarter but will stop you overthinking for a while say yes to sunsets and clean sheets and hot showers and love because love is truly everything and you are rich in it you are wealthy you are a fucking rock star you've just been in rehab for a while I think we are finally getting to the point where, well, for me, I, I don't want any more career mapping. I don't want any more responsibility. I'm not trying to climb a ladder at all. And then on top of that, like, I am looking for the most amount of money to utilize my skill sets in the most comfortable low stress capacity like give me the money the most money for my intellectual property skill set like I, I, I'm not looking to move up I don't want to take on anybody else's load I don't want to have to delegate things that are mine out you know I don't want to do that anymore and I don't know if I don't think I'm alone I think people are tired they sick and tired of the rat race and trying to prove yourself. There was another young lady on here that mentioned the, the new pet to enemy timeline or whatever. Like you come in and everybody's excited about what you know until you start knowing what you know and putting in place what you know. And then you're not well liked anymore or there's an intimidation factor when the whole time you don't want their job. You don't want it at all, you know. But then there's another thing that I've come to realize. I don't think companies really want change. I think they welcome, they say that they welcome change, but I think they want to operate the way that they want to operate. They just like to say it because it sounds good. It sounds progressive. But there are places right now still doing things the way they did them 10 years ago. And we're in 2024 and there's no reason for that. And so for me, I don't want I don't want all that stress anymore. I want to get off work and still have the mental the mental bandwidth to just be with my family and enjoy life. Have y'all ever had a job that was so bad that when you got off you just quiet? Like when you get off you don't want to talk. I, I don't want that no more. I don't care how much money it is. No wonder I see some cars just rotting away in front of people's building and I'll be like okay like I guess that car was abandoned for reasons like this because honestly like if um some of the stuff you might have if they just tell you this is the amount that you need to pay to actually fix this you just be like you know what like just let it just go away like I rather just buy a new one because like what do you mean by about seven thousand just to fix the car then it's just gone like at that point you just need a new one it's really crazy because i i'm actually saying and even i do that like sometimes have you been broke so broke that you you know you don't even have much money you go to a place for car repair so they can diagnose the car and let you know what is wrong with it and then when they tell you as long as it keeps working and it keeps driving 
you're just gonna keep driving and riding that you're just gonna keep driving that car until it actually stops like honestly if it doesn't stop and it's like yeah you ain't gonna try to repair it like has that happened to you you made it to the end of this video thank you so much for watching this video to the very end please don't forget to click the like button it helps with the algorithm and i appreciate that so much and subscribe to the channel if you're watching me for the very first time and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below we'd love to see what you think about this video and hit the notification bell to get notified every time i post a new video i'll see you on the next one bye